Thank you for joining us here today on Hill Country Happenings News Minutes. I am at the Pontotoc Bodoc Festival. I have been to many different places around. I'm here at the car show doing the News Minutes. Lovely day. Also, I've been to a showcase talent show with the 4-H. I've been down to the trail, the Tanglefoot Trail, where they were having their bike race. And I got to be carried around by a wonderful gentleman, Miss Ellen's husband, Don. And I met their children, and it was just a so much fun day. There are a few things that are going on in this area. Baptist Union County was recognized for high-value health care. They were named as a finalist for Premier Incorporated's 2019 Quest Award for high-value health care. This award recognizes hospitals for achieving top overall performance in four of five measures in Premier's Quest 2020 Collaborative, including affordability, effective health care, coordination, prevention, and treatment. I am very excited that Baptist Union County has been named as a finalist for the 2019 Quest Award for High Value Health Care, said Walter Grace, CEO and Administrator of Baptist Union County. Receiving recognition from a national quality organization is a testament to the care that we deliver and the quality of our clinical team and physicians. We are proud to provide safe, affordable, and high-quality health care for our community. Baptist Union County offers a variety of services, including adult and pediatric inpatient care, maternity, surgery, 24-hour emergency department, and diagnostics. For more information about Baptist Union County, please call 538-7631 or you can visit unioncounty.baptistonline.org. Congratulations on your award. And the New Albany School System sent us a press release this week about preparing all for success. When the New Albany Middle School students saw Principal Paul Henry pushing around a wheelbarrow the first week of school, some may have thought that he was helping with some of the construction that is going on in the building. They soon found out that their new principal was rolling out positive behavior program full of fun treats. Henry hopes the students will understand the importance of going above and beyond the normal expectation of good behavior and being a good student. We want to instill in our students the importance of being good citizens who give back to our school and our community, Henry says. Students will be recognized for making good choices and going above what is expected of them. Teachers have a positive referral slip that they can give to the students when they notice good behaviors. These can include helping a fellow students, assisting staff members, making good decisions, or just being kind. Once a student receives a positive referral, they must be responsible and keep up with that referral until Friday of that week. At the end of each week, an administrator or staff member will roll the wheelbarrow around to each class and ask the students to come forward if they have received positive referral that week. Each student will have the opportunity to pick out one piece of candy and one school supply from it and then sign their names to the wheelbarrow. Their name will go into a drawing for a $100 bill at the end of the year. On Friday, August the 16th, the first group of students received their treats from the wheelbarrow, and Mr. Henry had the opportunity to talk to each classroom once again about the positive behavior program and the importance of making good choices. As we prepare all of our students for success in academics, athletics, and extracurricular activities, we want them to understand that positive behavior, respect, and good decision-making will be a large part of achieving that success, Henry explained. Now, the Tallahatchie River Fest is coming up, and this will be on September the 26th through the 28th. There's all different kinds of things going on. They're going to have the Tell of Two Faulkners with storytelling, and they're going to have dinners and tours of the gardens, and then they'll be having functions down at Ripley, and the buses will be taking everybody back and forth. Also on Saturday, the 28th, they're going to start the day with a river run, and then they'll have the arts and crafts. Later that night, they'll have music with a headliner of Thompson Square. If you're not familiar with Thompson Square, just give them a Google. They're an award-winning group. We have all of our wonderful shows here on Hill Country Network. We hope that you'll look them up and see what time they run. and That way you will not miss any of our original shows. Now be sure and go and like all of our social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, 
And we also put all of our original programs on YouTube. So be sure to go and subscribe. The more subscriptions we have, the more that we can get the word out and the more original programming we can do for you. Now, we hope you will stay tuned and enjoy the rest of the show. And we hope you will have a wonderful week. Lance Martin, uh, Fire Chief City of Pontotoc. We're doing our annual uh, two-day festival of the Bodoc, and we uh, do pancakes and sausage for 6 to 10. I think this is our 25th year of doing this, and it has grown leaps and bounds every year. We have, it goes into our volunteer department. We're a combination fire department, full-time and uh, volunteer, and we use this money for different things. We just used $5,000 of it to purchase a bunch of wildling, wildland firefighting gear and along with extrication jumpsuits to try to help keep ourselves a little cooler in the summertime. Did over 600 plates yesterday, so I think we're on course for that this morning as well because we still have about an hour and a half left. No, we ended at 10, or when we run out of food. It's our, I think it's our 25th year. It's, we've been a part of Bodoc ever since uh, it started, and it's just grown by leaps and bounds every year. We do it every Friday and Saturday during Bodoc weekend from 6 a.m. to 10, uh, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. And uh, five dollars a plate. It's all you can eat. And we do to-go plates as well. Unfortunately, and, I, and I, I didn't get to see it. I just know about it. It was people that we had never met was up here doing this for us. It, unbelievable. We had circuit judges, uh, local politicians. We had some state politicians that was here, and I mean nobody was campaigning. It, it was just everybody jumped in, and because uh, unfortunately Friday kind of pays all the over. Friday kind of pays the bills for us, and Saturdays where we actually make a little bit of profit. So. Yeah, had it not been for the community stepping up doing that last year, we would have been in a, about a $3,000 hole, unfortunately. So, so I can't thank them enough for the, all the countless faces. I don't even know who helped. But uh, it, it was a blessing, absolutely. If I were to define a fireman, it would probably be a juvenile adult with the biggest heart you've ever seen. Um, we're not perfect people uh, by any means, but every day they get up and it's, it's their mission to help someone and, and, and that's a firefighter it's hard it's not just a, being a fireman or anything else it's what can we do to help someone else and make their day better because generally when we're called somebody's having probably the worst day of their lives so anything we can do to improve that day that's that's what we're here for
Tanisha Akers. I'm Pontotoc County's Miss Hospitality. Why are you out here today? I'm here to cheer on the bike riders and uh, hand out drinks, uh, snacks, and medals. How's it been this morning? Oh, it's been great. Um, it's a little warm, it's getting warmer, but it's great. It's a very beautiful day. Thank you. So about, there were over 100 people here yesterday? I'd say there was 150 people here. The band, 150 people. Right over here and played, a uh, pep band played the national anthem. And then they got up and snuck out and, and made a little quiet. I, I knew they were going to leave, but I didn't see them leaving or hear them leaving and they left. And, uh, oh. And they, they had, you can uh, go ahead. Ellen had made some little, or had somebody to make some Mississippi cookies. Uh -huh. Got a Mississippi stamp and stamped them out. Uh -huh. And then they put a little squiggle line on it and put Houston, Pontotoc, and New Albany on the little squiggle line for the trail. Where's the big bridge at? That is north of town here, just past, you know, where. She Thank got you. Where the um, Montgomery Drugs, well, where the road goes across north of town, the four lane. Right. That's taken from the four lane, head facing south, facing this way. Okay. Just where that's taken. Trent uh, Baker made that picture. The sound is extremely good in it. Uh -huh. uh, it. The wall makes it project out, and the trees, but you can get, a, get in there with a little speaker and holler, testing one, two, and the readers over yonder will wave at you. They can hear you They're all the way across the road. Down. That is just awesome. And uh, our bridge what? down yonder that we put in, we've got lights on it. Oh, at nice. Night. Yeah. At night it lights up, and they were all neat and straight. And some kids came by and cut them zip ties and let, let them fall in the water and we had them go back up like exactly duck. right yet. But we used to have every, we were good as a Mississippi River like Bridge. Right. Memphis.
A secondary parking lot by the 4-H building, you know what I'm talking about? But we were shooting almost toward the building into that big mound. So what the arrow does, it hits behind the mound, but instead of just stopping there like a regular arrow, it goes up in the sky and it lands on top of the 4-H building. That's like 20 feet. 
how that happened is still oblivious to me. Has anyone gotten that arrow down this year? Where'd you go? I don't think so. No? They, they've not gotten it down? Yeah, so somebody needs to go up there and get it. <laughs> but another, we decided after that, I guess the coaches were like, oh, maybe it's not a good idea to be shooting at the building. And so what they do is they decide to go around the side and shoot basically beside the building instead. But, and this is a year later, what happens is we've been about three practices in and we're all for it. We're starting to actually hit the targets in, you know? And in the middle of practicing, I hear, what, what's it like, two, three whistles, something like that, tells you, stop firing, stop firing. And what happens is I look up and there is a freaking llama walking behind the targets, just chewing on grass. I look over at home and I'm like, you see the llama too, right? Because I, at that time, I did not know what what the heck was going on. Am I dreaming? You know? But a lot of the really funny stuff happened whenever I was about, probably about three years in 4-H, and I started the Brakes Drama Club. And we actually were, had the opportunity to go to watch.
great city, Mississippi. Now, some of you old folks, if you know who Jerry Clyde is, well, you just ought to know Joe Mage right there. <laughs> Jerry Clyde, born where it comes from Route 4, Liberty, Mississippi. Now, Route 4, Liberty, Mississippi, that's 12 miles west of Macomb, Mississippi. 65 miles northeast of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 116 miles due north of New Orleans, Louisiana. It was there that Jerry Clyde first saw the light in Amiot County, September the 28th, 1926. That's when he was born. Now, in Amiot County, the only extracurricular activity they did was to go loot hunting or go to revival meetings if they had no crops laid by. Other than that, all they had to do was work. Now this particular day that I want to tell you about, they weren't too busy. All they had done was cut down a few fence rows, shove shells of corn to go to the mill, to have some ground up. When they go to the mill, they have some ground up for dog, dog food, and some ground up for cornmeal for regular human consumption. They drew up some water because that was wash day. Help get the side back, what it rooted out from under the fence. Root shot two sticks of firewood, peg them, throw them down over the wire so the side couldn't root out the motor. They had a red kid. Oh, if I'm lying, I'm dying. They had red kids back in them days. When he got through the red kid, Jerry walked out on the front porch and he hollered, hey! Them dogs come right up on the house running and barking. They knew they was going hunting. He hollered again his neighbor way across the sage back, grass patch, hollered back. That then I'll meet you halfway. They got down there, they got down from the Mid County swamps, they started hunting. Directly, they heard they started to hurt rat. Jerry whipped his lot head around and looked, and he liked to scare him to death. Because the beam of light from his carbide light that he had wired his cap, he hit a man right in the face. And they was hunting on this man's place. Jerry said, Mr. Barron, is that you? Yes, Jerry, what y'all do? We hunt. How many did you kill? Four great babies. Mr. Barron said, Well, Jerry, good and glad to see you. How would you all like to spend the rest of the evening hunting with me and John? Jerry looked, and there stood John Eubanks. A man that lived on Mr. Barron's place. Now, John, he was a great American. He believed in giving everything a sport chance. He thought of the time they were born, they keep listening to him, give everything a sport chance. John didn't believe in shooting no coon out of no tree. John said, take a cross cut saw, coon hunting with him. When the dog's tree cut the tree down, or climb the tree and make the coon jump out. Now, a lot of times, we'd climb a tree and make the coon jump in amongst 20 dogs. But at least that coon had the option of whooping all them dogs and walking off if it wanted to. It was strictly left up to the coon. Give it a sport chance. So he told us that Mr. Barron and I would be glad to go hunt with you. You know, he was a rich man. He had sold a lot of cotton for a dollar a pound back in the First World War. And he had those world-renowned dogs. No Jerry, he had old highball, trailer, little red. His buddy had old Brun, Queen, Spot. They got went run down in that swamp, they started hunting. Tricky old Brun. Old Brun didn't bark at nothing but a coon. Yeah.